And this video is an introduction to ERP and how ERP lends itself to organizational success. This goes along with the Supplemental ERP Sim SAP Labs and Textbook, the second edition, though you probably could watch this and learn something about ERP. <laughs> this is not necessarily something that's going to go right along with the book. So this is this should be pretty quick. Just talk about how organizations are successful and why ERP is important for that success. So in order to be a successful organization, you need to have a number of different things. So you're looking for a seamless communication between individuals, between departments, between the functional areas. You want accurate information and you want that information in real time. So whatever that information might be, you, know, you can't really get anywhere without it being accurate. And if it's dated, that's not really gonna help either. So you need it to be, for one thing, correct, <laughs> and then two, available right then. You also need within the organization appropriate resources. And these are this is everything from office supplies to the people who work there, if there are machines, uh, that could be even a copier, whatever it might be. All of these different things within the organization need to be appropriate for what it is you're trying to do. And on top of all of this is being nimble. So adjusting your strategies based on what's actually happening within the market. So if a change happens in products or services that affects your organization, you need to be able to change quickly. So again, this all kind of works together. You, you need all of them to work together for the organization to be successful. So you can't really be nimble. You can't respond to changes in the market if you don't have accurate and real-time information, if the appropriate people aren't finding this information, and you don't have communication throughout. So the old management style, and I have this in quotes old, because there are a lot of companies that are still run like this, but basically it's you have the functional areas, and each one of those functional area areas is in a silo. So you have the upper management who are making decisions, and there's just, they're telling operation supply chain management what to do, they're coming right back to upper management, going back and forth. Sales and marketing. So even though sales and marketing need to know something about what's happening on the supply chain or production, the information goes up and then the information comes down. When it's ready, management comes back down with information to accounting and finance. Information comes to HR, even though all of these things are interconnected. So HR needs to know what's going on over here and accounting needs to know what's going on over here, but it's these, these towers of information within the functional area. The new management style is recognizing that everybody needs access to all information at any given time. And if you have the right people working for you, you can trust them to make their own decisions in the moment. So this is the, the new style where upper management is still keeping track of what's going on and helping make decisions and proactively making decisions as well. But the information is flowing between the functional areas. So as, let's say, sales makes their sale, if there is some sort of compensation for it, HR knows immediately. If they're making their sales and the operations side needs to plan for production or for purchasing, they know about it immediately. It doesn't have to go through this upper management. So again, it all feeds together. Purchasing feeds into bookkeeping, labor feeds into HR. You need to be able to evaluate what's going on uh, in all the different areas, and this is maybe an upper management uh, aspect. So looking at, well, how could we increase our revenues? How can we decrease our expenses? Do we increase our production line? Do we need a bigger warehouse? And then also looking at it to say, is it cost effective? So based on the current needs. If you're launching a new product as an example, so marketing might come up with a sales plan. The operations side might come up with a way of uh, executing that plan, of creating the new product. Human resources needs to come up with who's going to do it, <laughs> maybe they need to train people, maybe they need to hire new people, and finance will come in and say, can we afford it? So all of these different things, this is launching a product, it's not one functional area that does it, it's all of them, they all come together for this. So it gets kind of complicated, all the different ways that the data and the information, uh, the money, the, the, the processing, compliance, the way it all works together for, throughout all the different functional areas. Well, that's where ERP comes in. ERP helps organize all of that chaos. 
So ERP is Enterprise Resource Planning, and within this course, it refers to a single software system. So that's an important part of the definition. It is one software system that is utilized by the entire organization to manage the entire organization. So as an example, SAP or Oracle, uh, maybe Epicor, these are different ERP systems. You would have that system running the entire organization. So HR would be included, sales would be included, uh, wherever your, your warehouse is, the warehouse management is included. All of it is within one software system. And that's how it organizes everything. So this, in, when I'm talking about software, it's not productivity software. I mean, it's not Microsoft Word or Photoshop or something like that. It's the software that manages the functional areas. So where you're doing your accounting, where you're putting in your sales invoices, all of those things are going into one system. And that's how the information is passed all the way around. So when you have one system over all of the different functional areas, when someone, well, I'll go here, places a, an order for sales, HR automatically knows that someone needs to be compensated for it. And maybe on the supply chain side, they realize they should be ordering more of the raw materials because this is being sold. And then the production side has to come up with their piece of it. Within all of these, there's a, the accounting side that needs to be keep, that you need to keep track of. So it all works together. And then upper management is here just able to, looking, to look at the reports and see what's happening in real time. And it's accurate because it's all in one system. And unless someone is putting the wrong information in, at least <laughs> you know, it's, it's as accurate as, as the humans are making it. So there are, there's not a transfer from one system to another with a, a machine error. So going back to this list, all of this is really the definition of ERP. This is the reason why a company would invest sometimes millions of millions of dollars into an ERP system. It's to be able to accomplish all of these. So you have the seamless and accurate real-time information. It's all available for everyone. You can actually look at each department, each resource, and figure out what needs to be done. What can we do to increase efficiency? And being nimble. If you're all in one system, making a change should be easier. It's not updating multiple systems, multiple processes. It's one system, one set of processes. So one ERP system, all the transactions are considered under one roof. There's no need to check another system. So if the salespeople are trying to take an order for something and it's out of inventory, well, they don't have to call another department or check another system to see what it is that uh, when that product would be available it helps reduce human mistakes so there's the idea of common information so thinking about just a customer if you have a customer it's unlikely that the customer itself is going to change its address or its company name or phone number if that information is available well then the salespeople have it and then that information goes over to the shipping department and it's shipped to that same place so it's not copying information from one area to another. So it's accurate, real-time information for everyone who needs it. It's instant organizational communication. You literally press the button, you save a sale and the, the sales module, and it's updated everywhere it needs to be. Appropriate resources, looking at the, uh, the, the metrics within the one system, allows you to look at all the different areas. So uh, which humans, if you have the HR set part connected, do the humans working there need better training? Do you need a new machine? Are you noticing that a certain part needs to be replaced uh, on the production line more often? Maybe if you have multiple facilities with the same machine, one area they have to one one plant they have to replace that part often, and they don't in others. Well, what is that? So it ends up making it a little easier to figure out what's going on with your resources. You also can kind of figure out if you need to upgrade, whether it be the humans or the machines or replace your building, does it make sense to do that? So it's quantifying some of the decision making. And then being nimble. Again, one ERP system that is organizing the entire organization, it should be easier to make a change 
So being able to change maybe what a product is or a, the process itself, because you aren't changing multiple systems, it should be easier to make the change. The process itself gets mapped to the system. If you adjust the process, you're changing it in one place, and then you just need to update the humans on how to do a new process. And when you're more nimble, you are more competitive. So ERP is actually strategy. And that's what we're doing within this class. So it requires a knowledge of all the different functional areas. And you don't need to be an expert in anything, but you need to know something about accounting, you need to know something about finance, you need to know something about marketing, something about econ. So at this level, you should be able to better understand how ERP is interacting with the different areas. So this isn't really specific to operations, supply chain, or any type of IMIS or IT. It's general business strategy. So as you've gotten into an upper class and you've learned a little bit about each functional area, this is where you can kind of see how they all work together. So it's complicated. The first few weeks of the class, you're going to be bombarded with a lot of information, but it'll start to make sense maybe midway through the semester, how this interacts with this and why it is you're doing the things that you're doing. So the first thing we're going to do in class is learn how to navigate SAP. So we'll have a number of different assignments that help you really just kind of figure out what you're doing in SAP so you're not, you know, we don't want you fumbling around <laughs> in SAP trying to do strategy. So figure out how to use SAP first and then you'll learn about the ERP production process and then from there, it will be learning by doing, how to have a successful strategy using ERP for nimble decision making, and then also really evaluating the different resources and products that you're, you're going to be working with. And that's the class. That's an introduction to ERP.